What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video, and today we are talking about He-Man, Netflix, Kevin Smith, and how it's potentially going down The Last of Us Part 2 road, and that's not a good place. The Last of Us Part 2, one of the great disappointments in video game history. Uh, the Last Jedi of video games, where they, they wanted to make you believe that the beloved character of, character of Joel would be featured in the game, prominently featured. They used misleading marketing to make people believe that, but ultimately the good old bait and switch happened. And a lot of people are wondering if that's what's going to happen with He-Man. Now, the trailer for Masters of the Universe Revelation came out, and it looks pretty awesome. The animation is incredible. Uh, the character designs are amazing. The voice acting is on point. Mark Hamill as Skeletor is incredible. The action, the energy. Uh, the music was a little strange, but it still worked. Overall, the trailer was great, and it's being overwhelmingly positively received, rightfully so, if that's all you're seeing. But there's a lot more to this that a lot of people are concerned about. Now, I was into He-Man a little bit growing up. I had a few of the action figures, and I watched the show. I watched the live-action movie. I was never into He-Man as much as I was into G.I. Joe or Silverhawks or Transformers or Thundercats, but I still was aware of it, and I watched it. So seeing this is really cool. There's a lot of cool... Uh, you know, moments, and it's just, there's a lot of nostalgia built, built into that. And I'm also a Kevin Smith fan, at least an old school Kevin Smith fan. Um, how could I ever not be a fan of the guy that gave us Clerks 1 and 2 and Chasing Amy and Mall Rats and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Dogma and, and just so many great films that I love so much. And so, obviously, in recent years, Kevin Smith is, is kind of cringe. Um, he cries at everything. You can't take any of his opinions seriously. That's all fine and dandy. But the trailer itself, as it's presented, looks really good. But there are concerns. There are concerns, and it's why I tweeted, Neil Druckmann is looking forward to Kevin Smith T-Man. That's right. And why? Well, so this was on Cosmic Book News. Uh, I believe this is last month. Kevin Smith's He-Man is woke, possibly confirmed. Kevin Smith's He-Man Netflix animated series may indeed be woke, possibly confirming earlier rumors and speculation. Last year uh, saw it rumored that He-Man would be replaced by Tila in the new Kevin Smith animated series coming to Netflix this summer, which wouldn't be a surprise at all and would fit with Hollywood's agenda of replacing male characters. Uh, so why not replace the manliest of all, not to mention He-Man is blonde. Uh, while previously Kevin Smith seemed to have refuted and shot down the rumors by stating his series is all about He-Man, that remains to be seen as an action figure for the series has hit the net that potentially may offer otherwise in addition to some recent first look images. And then they kind of get into spoiler territory, but that was about a month ago uh, when that was posted. And then uh, Stephen Wayne posted this. Netflix released an updated official synopsis, synopsis of Masters of the Universe Revelation today, and it confirms Tila will indeed become the main character. The War for Eternity uh, culminates in Masters of the Universe Revelation, uh, an innovative and action-packed animated series that picks up where the iconic characters left off for decades. After a cataclysmic battle between He-Man and Skeletor, Eternia is fractured and the Guardians of Grayskull are scattered. And after decades of secrets tore them apart, it's up to Tila to reunite the broken band of heroes and solve the mystery of the missing sword of power in a race against time to restore Eternia and prevent the end of the universe. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now again, in isolation, and again, these are the things that never get clipped when I say this. In isolation, I don't have a problem with a female character rising to prominence. I have no problem with that in isolation. What I have a problem with is that we continue to see this happen in Hollywood over and over and over again. It's constant. This is all they do. It's pandering after pandering after pandering. And like I said, the last time we saw an iconic male character prominently featured in the marketing to pull the audience in, it turned out to be this right here. That's right, The Last of Us Part Two, And that's what this seems to be. This seems to be more of the same. In isolation, there's no problem. But when you look at the bigger issues within Hollywood... That's where the frustration falls into place. Now, again, this is all still speculation. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, and time will tell. 
Again, judging it simply on the trailer itself, I thought it looked incredible. I really did. I would love to see G.I. Joe brought to life from that perspective with that type of animation, but I already know what would happen if G.I. Joe was brought back to life. We're already seeing it on the big screen and what they're doing with Snake Eyes. So, with Hollywood, you just... I don't have any faith, period, in Hollywood. Yes, there are things here that I like, things there that I like. There's Cobra Kai. There's there's a, a maybe a movie here, a movie there. That's fine. But I have no faith in anything Hollywood produces. They've just they have affected me so in such a negative way with the way that they treat properties. I don't have faith in anything they're going to do because all of them are caught up in the nonsense. All of them are more concerned with preaching instead of telling good stories. And this is why a lot of people are concerned about this with Kevin Smith. And I think that they're justified in having those concerns. Ultimately, we're going to see how this all plays out. But no property, even Cobra Kai, is, is not above me having concerns. Even me, who loves Christopher Nolan, who it's hard to believe Christopher Nolan would ever go down the identity politics rabbit hole. And I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying that I don't have full faith to say he won't because Hollywood is such an effed up place full of effed up people. It just really is. The entertainment industry as a whole has been affected by this stuff. And so the fans, the same fans that you called toxic and racist and sexist are the same fans you're pandering to to pull that audience in just so you can then use the bait and switch. And then when those fans get mad because you used, you used misleading marketing to pull them in, you then call them names even more because they're angry because you lied. When you get held accountable for your actions, you then try to flip it around onto the audience. And that's what people are tired of. They're tired of you blaming the audience for your bad decisions, for your bad storytelling. We've seen this way too many times. And that is why so many fans across the board are done with this type of stuff. It's why I've been playing more video games and watching more anime. And it's not to say that video games are completely you know, not affected because video games are affected too. It's just not as widespread. And that's why I've been focused on video games, Nintendo, you know, Titanfall 2, Warzone. Uh, I even played some Minecraft for the first time the other day. I'll be uploading some of those videos very soon here to the channel. Um, and then watching anime because it's just good storytelling. And that's all I really care about is good storytelling. I don't have a problem with female characters. I don't have a problem with non-white characters. What I have a problem with is when you can't create new properties and you want to try to change pre-existing properties and then those characters that you have then changed you've given us a badly developed character because you were never interested in actually giving us a good well-written character you just wanted to push propaganda and of course the story is going to suffer for that that's why so many people are tired of this just tell good stories but at this point we've hired hollywood's hired so many activists at this point there are no good storytellers left there's few there's a few i guess but the general you know, the general vibe in Hollywood is that it's it's all activists that are just there to push their anti-Trump nonsense and their identity politics bullshit. That's really what it comes down to. Anyway, if you guys enjoy this video, please continue to support us over on geeksandgamers.com, our website. Our premium membership has continued to be successful. Thank you all so much for that. Um, it really means the world to me and my team. Um, also, just for free, you can sign up to geeksandgamers.com for free. You can jump in the forums, have any discussions you want for free. We're working on a lot of different things, and we're really excited for the future. The premium membership is $10 a month minimum, and you can give that, and then that will give you exclusive access to a lot of our content. We also have our uh, platform over on Local, so if you want to support us over there, that will greatly help. So a lot of cool ways to support Geeks and Gamers. Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe to Gaming with Geeks. Subscribe to Park Hoppa. Subscribe to Sports Wars. Subscribe to Geeks and Gamers Live. And if you want to check out my personal channel, you can do that too. D-Day Cobra, D-D-A-Y-C-O-B-R-A. -A. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video. And we will talk to you later.